Hi, my name is Alexander Fedoriuk, and today I'm going to be talking about musical instruments from Eastern Europe. Specifically, Cymbalum, an uh, instrument that was originated in Persia in 9th century BC, made its way into uh, all different parts of the world. Uh, Cymbalum has uh, 125 strings, a big resonating box. Cymbalum is the predecessor of a piano, and when it was originated, it was a, a, a very small instrument that had only 20 strings and you could carry around and in 1870s instrument maker Joseph Shunda came up with this contemporary layout and uh, today we know this as a contemporary cymbal. So now you can hear how the cymbal sounds. explore the sound of a traditional Ukrainian cymbale where they use uh, very short sticks and uh, they don't have anything on it, no cotton, no string on it, just uh, bare wood and uh, the sound is very metallic. <laughs> So next, we're going to travel to Romania, a uh, southern portion of the Carpathian Mountains, where they use cymbal in a lot of folk music. The sticks that they play with, they're very flexible, they use cotton and string at the end. The sound is very percussive. Here's an example. <laughs> Next stop on our journey will be Hungary, where cymbalum was developed into a form that we know today. Joseph Schunda, a musical instrument maker, he developed a fully chromatic system that spans five and a half octaves. A damper system which uh, involves dampers and the pedal, the sustain pedal that when you press down it lifts or lowers the, the dampers. And that's one of the biggest advantages of the cymbalum, which is uh, part of the hammer dulcimer family. All the instruments that have strings and uh, you hit with hammers belong to a hammer dulcimer family. So in Hungary, in traditional music, a lot of times they use sticks that are much softer than in other regions. It imitates the sound of the piano. Here's an example. <laughs>
Now we're going to explore the uh, traditional instruments of the Carpathian Mountains that belong to a flute family. Many centuries ago, shepherds would make uh, different types of flutes from woods that were available around in the Carpathian Mountains. And uh, originally it was a very simple flute with six halls. It was a diatonic instrument and it, uh, it was a very primitive. And then around the turn of the century in Ukraine, instrument makers decided to add additional halls and they created a fully chromatic instrument and they call it Sopilka. Next, we're going to explore the instrument called Tlinka. This instrument has no finger holes and it's used to perform only using overtone series. Next, we're going to explore the instrument called pen pipe or pen flute and uh, in Ukraine they call it rebro, in Romania they call it nai. Uh, next, we're going to explore the instrument uh, called Dvodinsivka, uh, and it's uh, in Ukrainian it means double flute. So there's two flutes uh, that glue together, and one is a drone, has no finger holes, and the other one has six finger holes. And here's how it sounds. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the instrument Sopilka was developed in the turn of the century and uh, later on um, instrument makers created the whole family of instruments. Our piccolo Sopilka, we have soprano Sopilka, alto and the bass. So our, uh, all the musicians can play in an ensemble. Here's an example of an alto Sopilka.
Uh, another instrument that imitates bird calls uh, is known as ocarina and in Ukraine they call it zuzulka, which is the name for the bird and it's usually made out of clay. You can also play melodies on it. We have uh, another a simple version of the Zulka which has only four holes. This one mostly imitates the sound of the birds. But you can also play a, a simple melodies on it. Another instrument in Carpathian Mountains is the Joe Harp. I hope you enjoyed a journey throughout Eastern Europe and the Carpathian Mountains and all the wonderful musical instruments that have been in existence for many, many centuries and still played today. Thank you.